Hello, welcome to a Tuesday lunchtime edition of Mornings with Stanley. This time change is just killing me. So I didn't get this done this morning. And I still got to work later than I normally do. And I usually don't get there on time. <sighs> I'm tired. Anyway, had a good morning though. Did did my rowing, took the dogs for a walk, had a good breakfast. I have this Oats Overnight subscription. I probably, it's kind of probably more expensive than it should be or that I should pay for every breakfast, but it's, it's more, it was a peppermint mocha. It's like a, it tastes like um, peppermint bark. It's so good. Peppermint bark oatmeal. They have another one, that, that, they have test flavors. So if you're subscribed, you get to test out their flavors and they have one that tastes just like Fruit Loops. Only it was healthier. <laughs> so he said, so good. I can't wait till that flavor comes out. <clears throat> but they have some, like this one had caffeine in it, which I could really use right now. And then they have caramel cold brew that has caffeine and then a, a mocha something. Anyway, <laughs> and then today, because my meal box was late and I was out of food, and I got here right when I pulled up. I went to McAllister's and picked up a sandwich. Oh my goodness. <laughs> my brother always says, you're just like dad. All you do is talk about food. Cause my dad would remember <laughs> he was on a train trip and when he would rode the train from <laughs> Amarillo to California, he could remember what he ate on the train back in World War II when he was going to <laughs> in 1945. I guess it was 1944, maybe 1944. Yeah, 1944. <laughs> anyway, I had this, I'll have to tell you, it's a horseradish roast beef and cheddar sandwich at McAllister's. It's just divine. It is so good. Last time I ordered it, they gave me the wrong sandwich. I got, I ate at the office and I got back to the office and, <clears throat> and it was a turkey and cheese. It was good, but it wasn't as good as a horseradish. And I got their tea, their good tea. I'm just a walking, talking advertisement today. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> um, you might have to take my Southern card away because I don't like sweet tea. <laughs> I like this plain old unsweet tea, the way God intended it to be, in my humble opinion. Okay. Stanley's being good today. He likes these moments, don't you, Stanley? Yes, you do. Okay, I'm going to have to kick you out because I need to get to the reading done so I can get back to the office. <laughs> you don't seem to want to get up, do you? you do that. <laughs> Lucy is just outside. <clears throat> she likes to go in and out the door. And she likes me to open it for her. <laughs> Tuesday of week 40, In Christ by E. Stanley Jones. In him, the whole fullness of deity. Now this most astonishing passage. <clears throat> for in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. That's Colossians 2.9. The preceding verse gives the background out of which this verse comes. It was the background of Gnosticism, Gnosticism, with its belief in matter is evil and spirit is good. This brought forth the amazing statement of Paul, for in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. The emphasis was on the bodily. God came into matter in incarnation and thus redeemed matter as evil, making it the vehicle of the divine revelation and redemption. Nothing could be more important for our existence on earth, environed as we are with matter. The material was not alien, it was an ally. The spiritual would cease to try to manifest itself apart from the material and would manifest itself in material forms and in material relationships. A body hast thou prepared for me. Lo, I have come to do thy will. That's Hebrews 10, 5 and 7. The will was to be done in and through the body. The Greeks said matter is evil. The Hindus say matter is illusion, maya. 
The Christian says, matter is God made, God approved. God saw that it was good and will be used by God and man for redemptive purposes. The kingdom is to come on earth. The earth has a future and a goal. It has meaning. To stop up all holes, such as saying that God may have come into matter temporarily and partially, Paul says, in him the whole fullness of deity dwells. There is nothing in God that isn't in Jesus Christ, at least in character and essence. Jesus is God accommodated to human form. This did not happen only once. It still happens, dwells, present tense, bodily. The body was taken up into deity, transformed and transfigured, as in the Mount of Transformation, and will probably bear the glorified nail prints forever. So body and spirit were reconciled in Christ and now beat out music vaster than before. Here's our prayer for today. O Lord Jesus Christ, the meeting place of God and human beings, matter and spirit, and the reconciling place of all, I come to you. Make all my conflicts into concords and all my cross currents into one current of love for you. Amen. And our affirmation for the day, as the word becomes flesh in me, so my body becomes word. Jesus is Lord.